so having understood the concept of how the double eccentricity loading is going to work let us try to solve this question this question might look difficult when you are going to read the language but it just requires you to apply whatever i have already told you right you just need to apply and get to the final expression final answer for the eccentric loading shown below determine the loading path for load p such that point c is not stressed at all seems very tricky line but it's very easy it is asking you to find out the loading path of load p means how you should apply the load p along which line or along which coordinates should you apply the load p such that point c is not stressed at all means such that the resultant value of stress at point c is equal to 0 right obviously for this question you will be given four different options right all the options are going to be some sort of equations right because as you can see here this is a proper coordinate system this is the origin this is x axis this is y axis so in this coordinate system along which line along which line you should apply the load p you can apply the load p keeping the value of stress as at c as zero that's what question is asking you and if load p maybe it was a moving load or maybe point p uh, you can apply not only at this point but maybe you can apply it at different points so along what equation or at what different points you can apply the load p such that the stress on the c is going to be zero that's what the question is asking you right again as i told you four equations will be given and 90 percent students when they are going to read this question they are going to panic they will say that i don't know how to solve and they will leave the question but it's a very easy and very doable question let me explain you how you can solve it as we know so far whatever we have discussed the general equation we know and we know that the three factors these three factors are going to decide the resultant value of stress on any point when there is double symmetry right if there is single symmetry if this point p at which load is acting maybe it is lying on any given axis then there will be one equation gone one of the equation gone any of them here which will become zero e e x will become zero so this this term will be gone if the load is acting at this then i y y and the bending about i y y does not make any sense so this term will be gone e x basically it will become zero so this term will become zero only that term will be there if this loading p again moves at the origin so at the origin again this e y also becomes zero this is also gone so that is the case of only proper pure compression no bending right so this is the case of double symmetry and for double symmetry this is the general expression which we have already discussed now before moving on further before coming you know directly to solve this question and to find out the value of stress at c let us uh, you know look at different points a b c d let's look at all the points right because purpose is not only to get to the answer of this question but also to give you an overall idea of how you can write this equation into a more shorter and more useful form so what is p by a p we know it's given to us what is a a is b multiplied by d so basically this expression here if you want to write this expression here what can we write we can write minus p divided by bd correct or not similarly coming to this expression coming to this expression what can we write this expression can be written as uh, p e x how much is the value of x that will decide and that will be decided by the point on which you want to find out the resultant stress because in this entire expression of resultant stress p it is same right whatever point you pick p is same cross sectional area is same p p same e x is a constant given to you how much is the value of e x and e y how much is the value of e x and e y the eccentricity that is known to you that decides how much moment it is going to be so irrespective of what point you want to find out the stress at you you may want to maybe find out the stress here or here or here or here or anywhere on this area you may try to find out the stress but to find out the moment this only e x distance you have to take no eccentricity only you have to take so here e x is known to us it's a constant e y is also a constant 
I Y Y and I X S X X. Both of them are going to be constant. B D cube by twelve, D B cube by twelve, right? So these are also constant. So all these things which I have ticked, they don't matter. They don't depend upon whether you want to find out stress here or here or here or here or anywhere, right? But what are the two things that will depend upon that? Two things that will depend upon that are X and Y. At which point you want to find out the value of stress? What is the coordinate, x coordinate and y coordinate, coordinate of that point? That you have to feed here and then solve and then get the expression. So, if you want to find out at a, what will be the value of x coordinate for a? This is the x coordinate, which is b by two. And how much is the y coordinate? D by two. Similarly, for b, x coordinate is still b by two, but y coordinate is minus d by two. Getting the point, you have to put the value of x and y with respect to origin. So here, accordingly, you have to do plus and minus. Similarly, for c, x is minus b by two and y is minus d by two. So both the values are coming out to be negative. So the point is, the point here is that these values you have to plug or fit or put according to at what point you want to find out the stress. For example, I'm maybe I'm trying to find out the stress at point A, suppose. So at A, x is b by 2. So this value is going to be b divided by 2. And i y y means about i y y is about this line. So which is uh, it is going to be d b cube by 12, right? i about y y axis is going to be d b cube divided by 12, right? So let me write it as d and b cube divided by 12. Now this 2 will cancel out this 12 and give 6. This b will cancel out this and give b square. So ultimately what will you have? This 6 will come in the numerator, right or not? So you are going to have 6 p e x divided by d b square because this b will cancel cube and only square will be left. So ultimately by doing all the solving here, what term did you get? You got, you got this term here, right? This is the term that you got. Similarly, if you do the calculation here, if you do that calculation here, what term you are going to get? Instead of, instead of 6PEY, EX, you are going to get 6PEY. You can do that calculation just like we did this one. And instead of db cube, you will get bd cube, correct? So these are the three terms that you are going to get. This one, this one and that. All these three terms may get added together, may get, some of them may get subtracted with each other. All depends upon which is the section where the point is lying. For point A, we have written this for point A, right or not? So for point A, this is going to be compressive. At this point, right? Moment due to y is also be compressive, moment due to x is also going to be compressive. So this will be negative, this will be negative, all are going to be negative, all will get added together in this expression to give the resultant stress on point A, which is going to be compressive with a negative sign, right or not? You can simplify that, like you can take out P as common. For example, for example, if I want to write this entire expression maybe together. If I want to write this entire expression together, then we can take out some of the things as common, right or not? So let me do that. So this, these are the three terms that we have got. And now if I want to take out something as common, so minus p can come out as common, minus p divided by bd also can come out as common, right or not? So what do we have here? Only one. And minus sign is common already, so plus 6 e x divided by b d is common so only b will be left here similarly plus 6 e y b d is common so only d will be left here so this is the expression that you have got and b d is nothing but area cross sectional area so you can write it as a also minus p y a so this is the resultant stress due to all three factors at point a please note this a is representing area Right, this A is representing cross sectional area. Cross sectional area. So, let me write it as A and C here to differentiate this A from that one. Correct. This is also cross sectional. 
right so similarly to find it out at some other point you need to know x y dimension put it there you will get it but right now what is question it is asking us the value of uh, loading path or for what value of uh, the eccentricities or for what value of coordinates we are going to have zero stress at c so we are more interested in the point c here right so to write down the expression of c but still just for the knowledge i have written all of them this is what you are going to get from a right the same expression minus py cross sectional area 1 plus whatever this term is here that is here similarly for b also you can write the plus and minus as we have already discussed so this you will get for b similarly this you will get for c this you will get for d right basic expressions are still the same because all of them you can see are having x dimension either as b by 2 or minus b by 2 right a or b have x coordinate as b by 2 c and d have x coordinate as minus b by 2 similarly a and d have y coordinate as plus d by 2 and b and c have y coordinate as minus d by 2 so they are very much you know identical and symmetrical that's why these terms are not changing only the plus and minus signs are changing this is the value expression where we are interested so question can tell you that for no stress at point c or when point c is unstressed or when there is no tensile stress on c all of them means the same that sigma rc is zero so if you put that value this value as zero then this minus p by a will go on the other side that will also become zero and this is the term that we are going to have right and this term and this term both of them if we bring on the other side then we are going to have 6 ex plus b 6 ex divided by b plus c 6 e by divided by d is equal to 1 right if this comes on the left everything thing becomes positive so you get 6 ex plus b plus 6 e by divided by d is equal to 1 right so if you simplify that if you simplify this expression by equating it to 0 this is the final equation that you are going to get and you can see that has been written here correct slight more simplification divide everything with 6 so 6 will be gone from here and you will get 1 by 6 this is the desired equation desired expression and as you can see this is the equation of a straight line so what question can uh, give you as four options a lot of things it can give you right either it can make it mcq question where only single option is correct right so what it can do that here it can give you four different equations and the correct one is this right correct one is either in this form or in this form right equation of a straight line so you have to see which one of them is the correct and tick accordingly or if question want to make it as a multiple select question as a multiple select question then what it can do it can obviously write one equation it can obviously write that the loading path is going to be in a straight line the equation form will be a straight line and these sort of things can be written as four option you have to select the right one so basically if you want to keep the value of stress at point c as zero then whatever is the point where you are applying the load that is having some ey and some ex right all the points wherever you are going to load it where, wherever there is going to be some ex and some ey value the ex and ey value should satisfy this condition or the point where p is acting that is deciding ex and ey so that point of application that loading point if you join all of them together then this is the line the path that they are going to make which it should follow to have a zero stress at point c got it again if you look at the question very simple what we did whatever we already knew we just applied that for point c equated to zero what the answer it's a two-step process basically right i gave you detailed explanation but it's a two-step process but i guarantee you if this question comes in gate 90 percent students will not be able to maybe understand or maybe solve this question Okay?